Hello everyone, this is Daniel Badillo. Today I would like to talk to you under the topic, Dealing with Arrogant People. As we know, the global marketplace is very, very competitive. And in order to get the best candidate for the job, employers reach out to experienced recruiting and employment agencies to help them find the best person for a job. Their role is to sift through many professional candidates' resumes and make preliminary phone calls and weed out those candidates who do not possess the hard skills the employers are seeking for. For a predetermined fee, recruiters and employment agencies conduct background checks. They confirm a candidate's credentials and work hand-in-hand -hand with their clients in order to present a comprehensive job offer. In summary, a lot of background work is performed in order to understand the employer's needs and bargaining power. Recruiters and employment agencies spend insurmountable amounts of time going through resume platforms such as Indeed, Monster, Job Seekers, LinkedIn, and so many others in order to find that special someone that can fulfill the immediate needs of their client. Furthermore, during this time, the client and or employer has to also prepare for the interview to ensure that they're able to hire someone who can exceed the employer's expectations. However, despite the hard work put into by the recruiters, by the employment agencies and the employer, nothing can prepare them to deal with a candidate who displays the ill behavior of arrogance. It is sad to say, but throughout the corporate landscape, throughout every academic circle, throughout every ministry environment, and every imaginable business industry, we will encounter people who act as if they are superior to everyone else. These are the kind and type of individuals who portray themselves as better than their peers, better than their co-workers, better than their church members, and better than their fellow man. People that exercise such traits are categorized as having a high level of personal self-worth and are called out by society as being arrogant and self-centered. The behavioral patterns from arrogant people lead them to think that they are better suited, more efficient, and more qualified for the job. However, the truth of the matter is that arrogance does not come from a place of security, but rather from a place of insecurity. Arrogance does not come from a place of confidence, but from a place of always wanting to be validated and psychologically affirmed in some way. For this reason today, I want to address the hard topic of arrogance by providing an overview on how to recognize an arrogant individual. And I'm going to provide four counsels on how to help people break out of the cycle of pride and egotism. I'm also going to provide you with a personal story of mine on how I was able to break out of the mindset of desiring to be validated and recognized by my co-workers. There are many ways to identify an arrogant individual, but let me provide five tips on how you can identify this ill behavioral pattern. The first way you can recognize an arrogant individual is by observing how many times they boast excessively about themselves and how they over-exaggerate their achievements and their experience. As a pastor, as a leader, as an employer, you must train your staff to be extremely vigilant in recognizing those individuals who starve for attention so that you don't place them in a position that would allow them to belittle or devalue the worth of others. The second way you can identify an arrogant person is to evaluate the patterns where they tend to overestimate their importance in a project or in a job. People who overestimate their worth can consciously or unconsciously believe that their role is indispensable and necessary for the success of a project. In other words, they solely believe that without their influence or participation, the group will not achieve better results. The third way you can identify an arrogant individual is by observing their high tendency, and I want to reiterate the word high tendency. They have a high tendency and persistent inclination to challenge authority and do ranking. Many times you may witness people who work outside of their scope of influence because somehow they feel their accreditations, their academia, work history, their talents, abilities, and knowledge base 
is superior to their co-workers or even the person they directly report to. The fourth way you can identify an arrogant individual is by observing their sense of entitlement. There are individuals who feel that they should be the center of the universe, that everything should revolve around them, and that certain privileges should be extended to them. This feeling of entitlement can come from a belief of seeing other people as competitors. By this I mean that they desire what others possess. They, they desire their title, their position, the corner office, perhaps the recognition, perhaps the levels of influence and authorities. Last but not least, the fifth way to identify an arrogant individual is when you observe that they have a continual desire of making their priorities more important than everyone else's. Many times people will not work on the assignments that you as a pastor, as an employer or leader have assigned to them because they feel that this is not on their personal priority list and it does not benefit their personal interests. An arrogant individual always seeks a sense of self-adulation and self-gratification and has an uncontrollable desire to win at all costs. Now that I have provided some tips on how you can identify an arrogant individual, let me provide three counsels on how to deal with an arrogant person so that you don't get caught up in a very difficult situation. My first advice is to try to listen and comprehend the rationale of a person. And I have to really admit that this is difficult at times because no one likes to deal with someone who is arrogant. So at first, this may feel very uncomfortable, but you must understand that the arrogance is a defense mechanism protecting that person's personal areas of insecurity. Attempt to find out how you can help this individual feel valued, important, and productive. Try to find out what is this person lacking or what are, what are the needs of this person in order for them to feel productive in some way. My second advice is to not get engaged in any argument with an arrogant person because they always think that they're right and that you're wrong. They always have a conflicting point of view and they have sometimes an erroneous perspective. Arguing will only make you look bad. So use passive language to diffuse the conversation and be intentional in your course of action in order to address a conflicting matter. My third advice for dealing with arrogant people is to let them know your position regarding a matter. And sometimes it's exercising your authority within that church, within that nonprofit organization, or within your place of business. You have to let them know your position, your perspective, your opinion regarding a matter, and never lower your self-esteem nor lower your standards. Now, let's dive into the strategies of breaking the cycle of pride and egotism. And if you're taking notes, this is a great time to jot these down, to replay this audio, because these are life-changing. To break the cycle of pride and egotism, you must first conduct a personal intrinsic examination of all your insecurities. You have to ask yourself, why do I feel this constant urge to be validated? And once again, it takes a lot of personal time. It takes a lot of of moments of silence. It takes for you to be sometimes isolated from your friends, from family members, from co-workers. You have to have a personal moment where you have to ask yourself, why do I feel this constant urge to be validated? Perhaps you were overlooked as a child and you've been battling with a sense of rejection. Perhaps you were overlooked in your profession or overlooked by an employer and you feel that you failed in your career. Perhaps you've entered a season in your life whereas you are feeling insecure about your skills, your abilities. Or maybe you lived with someone who always told you that you would not amount to anything. If this is you, you must not fall into the trap of believing that you're not smart, that you're not intelligent, that you have nothing to contribute. Because this is all the contrary. You are smart. You are intelligent. You are brilliant, you are unique, and yes, you are gifted. Second, in order to break the cycle, you must stop comparing yourself to others. 
This means you have to stop comparing yourself to others at home, at work, and in your place of worship. You are directly hurting yourself emotionally by comparing yourself to others. Sometimes these individuals don't know that you're comparing yourself to them. And here you are losing sleep, wanting to appear as if you were superior to everyone around you. My third advice in order for you to break this cycle is to stop seeking admiration, affirmation, and approval. There is a popular phrase that goes something like this. When you've got it, you've got it. This means that you must let your talents, your experience, your abilities, your academia speak for themselves. There is a passage in scripture that counsels us in Proverbs 27.2 that says, Let someone else praise you and not your own mouth, an outsider and not your own lips. What this proverb is indicating is that you must allow your work to speak for itself. Allow others to praise you. And don't go into this seeking mode of seeking uh, admiration, seeking affirmation, and seeking approval from others. You are already talented. You are confirmed. You are validated. You are skilled. Again, you are gifted. My fourth advice in order to break the cycle of pride and egotism is to stop trying to create a network of voters. In other words, stop seeking people who will jump on the bandwagon every time you point out something bad about a person, a department, or organization. People who are arrogant cannot be arrogant by themselves, for arrogance always seeks company. They try to develop a network of people who can be influenced to believe that they are right and others are wrong, that they are the best candidate and others are definitely not. They believe that with the right numbers of votes, they will gain leverage over another person or another department. However, this type of behavior never works because ultimately your intentions and motives not only hurt you, but also affects your entire work environment. I want to end this podcast by giving you a personal story of how I had to break out of the mindset of desiring to be recognized and validated by my coworkers. More than 15 years ago, I was a young quality assurance technician, and I was the youngest person in the quality assurance department. Everyone else was 10, 20 to 30 years older than me. Because of this, I wanted to prove that I had more computer skills, more technical skills, that I was faster, that I could do more work and less time. And somehow I fixated in my mind that I was going to prove everybody wrong and that I was always right. I started to get a little arrogant in my skills, a little arrogant in the way I spoke, in the way I addressed myself in meetings, in a way the way I dressed myself on the production floor, and in so many others. In summary, my personality needed a lot, a lot of work and a lot of attention. Fortunately for me, my team members who were adults acted as adults, acted as mature adults, and they were able to point out all of my shortcomings. With a lot of patience, a lot of love, and a lot of guidance, they were able to steer me into becoming a team player. I can't tell you enough of how these life lessons truly shaped my personality over the years. Because of these past lessons and so many other lessons in life, I have become the professional and leader I am today. My advice to you is that if you're struggling with arrogance, Conduct a personal intrinsic examination of all your insecurities. List those out. Address those so that you will have no bottlenecks in life. Second, stop comparing yourself to others at home, at work, and in your place of worship in society. Because you are uniquely made. There is greatness in you. Third, stop seeking admiration, affirmation, and approval from others. You are already validated. You are unique in all the sense of the word. Become that needed team player and that needed asset your employer was always looking for. Fourth, stop trying to create a network of voters to align with your lack of confidence. And that is so important. Don't create a support group simply to align with your lack of confidence. Become an individual who is able to hear a different viewpoint and other people's perspectives and that you are not threatened by it or offended by it. 
If you do these things, your career will be full of success and endless opportunities.